Much of Nashville's Kurdish community arrived in 1991 after fleeing genocide from Saddam Hussein's regime. Hussein's genocidal campaign included the use of chemical weapons against civilian populations across Iraqi Kurdistan. Some of the Kurdish families living in Nashville experienced firsthand the horror of Saddam's chemical attacks. Miran Abdullah is one chemical attack survivor living in Nashville. In March 1988, Saddam Hussein, his regime, he started throwing chemical bombs to Halabja and to the, some of the military bases. And then that's how people got experience a little bit. If he did it one time, you know, we were all we'd be dead, you know. We had no idea what to do because this was a new weapon. Three of my uncles, they were Peshmerga. Peshmerga is the freedom fighter for Kurdish rebels. They know he's going to throw it to all the villages. So they would go to the villages and tell them, you know, a little bit about the weapon, chemical weapon. From 1980 until 1988, Iraqi forces were involved in a war with Iran. When the Iran-Iraq war ended, Saddam redirected his attention to the Kurds in northern Iraq, which he claimed had supported Iranian forces during the war. I was a kid, about nine years old, ten years old, and my sister also was like about eight years old. But my brother, my older brother, he was in college in Iraq. He saw the whole army coming toward us. He came for vacation just to visit us and tell us, you know, try to run away. Miran and his family took the advice of his brother and uncles and fled that night to the nearby Turkish border. Unfortunately, Turkish armed forces had occupied the border and blocked entry for the Kurds. Miran and his family were forced to return to their village, even though they had been warned that an attack was imminent. We just came back to the village on the same night. We had only like about a couple hours of sleep. And then my uncle came and they said, what are you guys doing here? They're gonna like destroy the whole villages. We ate breakfast together and then we tried to like run away behind the house. We saw two airplanes. They came over the mountain and dropped a couple bombs. It's like something you drop a barrel, like the dust came through. We thought that the plane maybe saw it, they would come back, you know, and try to like kill us. So we ran under, under the bunker. Over the years, Kurds had grown accustomed to conventional bombardments from Iraqi forces. Most Kurdish families in rural villages had built bunkers near their homes, and it was common knowledge to seek low ground during an attack. But through the experiences of the Peshmerga, Kurds learned that the dense gases of chemical bombs meant high ground could provide survival. During the attack on Miran's village, he and his younger sister were dragged from their bunker to safety in the hills. Miran's parents stayed behind to grab a few items before also fleeing. My uncle, he told us, run away, this is chemical bomb. There was a valley, small valley, water valley, behind our house. We went down that valley, and my uncle told us, instructed us to put our, wet our towel and put them our, on our face, you know, and cover up all the body. There was another uh, tunnel we had made in the mountain area, because we thought maybe if, if they bomb here, then we could go maybe stay there for a couple of days, and then after the situation get better, then we could come back. We stayed like about one hour in the tunnel area, and then uh, my uncle says that they have to go over there, you know, and see what happened to the village, to my parents. I tried to run away after them. I said, I'm gonna come with you guys. They told me not to come. There is still chemical bombs in the village, you know, the smoke is everywhere, you know. Don't come, we're gonna go and try to do something, you know. I said, no, I'm gonna come. Well, we went all the way to the village. Uh, we looked, we went inside the house, there was nothing. The only, the only thing I saw, you know, my donkey, my bird, everything is dead. I saw under the tree, all the birds, like, you could not even see a ground. Under that tree, it was like full of birds. Everyone died, you know, like, just like, it's like you put a blanket right there, you know of bird under that tree. We went outside behind the bushes, you know, the area that when we were first there and the uh, plane came, uh, we didn't saw anything. We went all the way to the valley. I saw my parents, my parents, my dad and my brother. They were laying behind the bushes. I saw, you know, they were hugging each other and, and die. I changed my direction to the other side. There was another also walkway going up to the mountain. And uh, I saw my mom also in the valley, laying down over there, 
she had like a bag of some stuff in her hand and that's all i was about nine ten years old i have no parents i have no way to live you know i have i thought you know i wish you know god took my life but you know like you wish for something but god is is the one that decides who goes who stays you know we had to like bury my parents and my older brother we did it and then we tried to like run to the border again, to Turkey. Miran Abdullah was one of 18,000 Kurds relegated to a Turkish refugee camp near the border. Life in the camp was uncertain, with daily needs like food and shelter directing existence. For Miran, like many refugees around the world, the temporary solution for their arrival became permanent. They had established some camps. It was a camp, tent camp in Turkey. We went over there and there was no blanket, no food, no water, nothing. It's just like tent under some sticks and it's like desert area. We thought it's just like a couple of days, but until we wake up, it was like about four years. We stayed in that tent. Organization would come to the uh, camp and they would tell us, we're gonna take some people from here to, to America, to Asia, you know, or to different country. And they would come to us, they would write our names, you know, everybody would put their names in there and then nothing, you know? Like two, three years, nothing. So after four years, our names show up in their system and they brought us to America. We moved here in 1996. We moved to Tennessee, Nashville and we stayed here since.